Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Lisa Smith, Kindred Stitcher. Today is April 24th. We are almost halfway through this year. What happened? It's like we, we realized that maybe someday this pandemic will end and all of a sudden time started to fly. So I hope you're having a great day. I'm filming while my husband is at the grocery store. Yes, he does our grocery shopping and he does most of our cooking as well. Um, I do the cleaning and I'll tell you when I cook, I usually clean as I go. My husband, not so much, but hey, I am just glad that he cooks and I'll take it, right? So I thought, well, I better get a, a video shot before I um, take off because I'm going to the Midwest retreat and I, I think we're flying out on Wednesday. It's sort of all day to fly east from here right? because we're on the very west coast, so you lose time from the time zone difference and then there's time to fly. And, and, you know, if I leave at eight in the morning, I get there at about three or four in the afternoon. So we have to fly the, the day before usually when we go to a retreat heading east. My friend Lori Textilist is my travel companion and uh, she's doing better. So a huge thank you to everyone who has asked about her and, um, you know, prayed during the time when we were dealing with some illness. So things are much better. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. Welcome to everyone. And if you're new to my channel, this is a channel about cross stitch. There's my sampler wall, sampler wall behind me. If you were in doubt, I also have some quilting stuff and some wool applique and all the crafty things because it's what I live for. Besides my family and in front of my job and besides my faith, <laughs> Um, yeah, I do enjoy a little bit of craft time. So welcome. If you're, um, a, someone who's been with me the whole time, God bless you. Thanks for coming back. So I have two big things I've been working on and one small thing since we last talked and I'm really, really enjoying, um, pulling from the pool of whips that I have. If you, you remember my last video, if you watched that, I have. 79 whips. I, I probably missed one. It's probably 80. And I finished, started and finished a Brenda Gervais, one of her new releases. And I moved that to the finish pile. And then I've been working on Ann Dale. And I also picked up Midsummer Garden by, this is by x Designs on Etsy. I bought this as a kit and the threads are incredible. They are, um, they're matte base. So they're not shiny. And they feel like the softest, how do I describe it? The softest sheets you've ever slept on. They're super soft. Oh, those are my, if you hear some knocking on the door, there's my cats. I have a little door stop on the back side of my door and they're, they've trained me. When they want to come in, they just pull that door stop down and knock the door. And it's basically, they just say, let us in. We want to come in. And I just ignore them half the time. Um, but this is from x Designs on Etsy. I'll put her shop below. Sometimes she has this kit in there and sometimes she doesn't. I don't know that she had it in there when I ordered it, but I had seen it before. So I just messaged her and she had it available. I want to say she might normally kit it with 32 count. And I asked if she could kit it with 40 count. And she said, yes, of course. Excellent customer service. I really like her, um, her work. And so let me show you, this is and actually, I didn't bring the threads over, so I'm going to go grab those real quick. So hold on just a second. Okay, so it is a dark day today. It's I noticed that it was, um, well, it's raining, which is normal. Spring rain in Washington State is normal. In fact, it's in the 50s or 60s today. We have had some warm weather, though, recently. But it's nice to wake up. It's cool and raining, but it makes it dark. So I have a light to help with that. But it, there's a lot of shadows in my video today. So let me show you the threads. Aren't those gorgeous? Oh, um, yeah, the colors on this, the color palette in this. I don't have a thread ring because sometimes I don't do a very good job of following rules. I tend to, on personality tests, I'm the person that does what they want. They're like, yeah, I'm going to follow rules when they make sense. But this, these colors are just absolutely luscious. And she has this on uh, what she calls 40 count thundercloud. 
it's a pretty loose weave fabric, but I, it's very nice to work on. And I had some of the, when I started, I had mid S U M and I didn't have garden and I had uh, put a couple of little flowers down below. I was working on this while watching game of Thrones and rewatching it, the series. And I mean, I like the plot of game of Thrones, but man, it is gory. So here I am stitching on a beautiful sampler and watching Game of Thrones, kind of crazy. But Midsummer, so I started stitching that and I made a mistake. I had Midsummer, so I had to pull out letters. And then I was stitching on the bottom Vine and I was, it's, um, I, I made a mistake. And so I had to pull some of that out. So one night I stitched on it and I really got nowhere. I, I stitched and unstitched. That was my goal that night is to unstitch everything before I started again. But this is Midsummer Garden. It's a pleasure to work on. Beautiful chart, easy to read, beautiful threads. Um, I posted on Instagram. Several people were like, I bought that chart because you showed it when you went on a girls weekend at my friend Lori's house. And it's true. I like to enable. So there you go. I also worked on Anne Dale. This is by Shakespeare's Peddler. It's huge. I'm probably going to have to scoop back because this is on a fat half and a 40 count on half a fat half and it takes up a good part of the fabric. I am stitching it on 40 count vintage patina by Lakeside. And I mean, look at this. Who doesn't want to stitch all those flowers? It's gorgeous. I was plodding right along on it and um, I made some headway. So let me just show you. In fact, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the whole thing and then I'll show you, I'll fold it in half. So this is where I am and I'm going to bring it a little bit closer. This was what done before. I don't know how to do it. There we go. This was um, this, the top half basically that I had completed before. And then I went to the bottom because I really kind of wanted to start flowing in the bottom. So I believe I had some of this done. That's about it. And I'm working my way across on the bottom. I've got half of that big tree done. And those kooky birds are so much fun to stitch um, that are all along the side of the tree. It's kind of blowing out because this is a pretty, I don't know, this is a big piece of fabric. I finished the swans. I think I said something on Instagram about those having my ducks in a row, but those um, are probably swans, not ducks. I've left open the grass, the dark grass and the light gold grass, but I have, I have to say, I really wanted to finish that. And I, I waited because I'm gonna work on this on the retreat. It's just good retreat stitching, right? It's just open blocks. Everything's filled, it's just fill in. So it's gonna be difficult to make mistakes with that. The everywhere where there's these little four, um, four leafed flower, Four, four petal flower, petals right word. I made those eyelet stitches and that is all throughout. So right here is a little eyelet stitch flower. Other than that, I didn't introduce any specialty stitches. I might on the basket that's in the center here. Somebody did it with some satin stitch and I might, I might do that. We shall see. So I'm working on that and Dale and my goal is to finish that in 2021. That should not be a problem. But I stopped working on Ann Dale to work on um, a piece for, it's a gift. And it's this one. So I'm stitching this um, two over two on 32 count. That was part of Stitch Mania last year. Sorry, my hair is gonna fall in my eyes. This is out of print. Um, but Barb and Alma have been reprinting things. And if you, if you're um, really wanting something like this to be reprinted, I encourage you to contact them. Just say, I'm really interested. I really hope that you reprint this. Be nice, right? <laughs> be polite, but just express your desires because they have been so responsive. This, so I took this though, and I thought I'm going to stitch this. And I was, I was, um, I, I was inspired by Carol Saltbox Stitcher. We were kind of, when I showed this before, we were chatting on Instagram and, and we talked about stitching this over one. So I did. Stitched it over one on 32 count. And it's the most adorable 
sweet little, I mean, are you dying? I love this. And I mostly use the call for colors. I didn't, there's eyelet stitches, but when I did the eyelets, the thread that I was using was too thick. So I did, I modified it. I just stitched some leaves and did a couple other things, but it's just, look at that flag. And, um, yeah, I think I put, I pulled the, the year from here and I put it here. I think that's about it, but I absolutely love this. Can't wait to see my um, stitching friend's face when they open it up. It's going to be fun. And so that's all I've been working on. Uh, I thought I would show you a couple of little vintagey things that I ran across in my jewelry box. And I kind of laughed at this because this is straight out of the... This might have been the late 80s or early 90s. I got a hair in my face. It's driving me crazy. But I, I remember seeing this. I might have ordered this out of a magazine. Because then there was no online anything, right? There was no internet even, really. You either had a stitching store, and it was such a treat to go to a stitching store. I mean, I don't. there were a lot more than. In the town I grew up in, there was one craft store that would have been sort of like a Joann's, I think it was like Craft World or something like that. And they had a lot of latch hook rugs and whatever you could do in the 80s and 90s crochet. Um, I don't remember as much knitting, but there were, there was painting. But I don't remember there being a lot of cross stitch there. And then when I went over the mountains to another town, there was, um, oh, there was a cross stitch store in my town. In fact, that store had two locations, one in my town and one in a town over the mountains that was like 80 miles away. I think it was called Mimi's Cross Stitch. And um, I just remember going in there and like, oh, my heart be still. You know, I, I was just like a kid in a candy store. And I remember my, I bought a couple little kits from Craft World. My sister got me hooked on that. And I started, I, I stitched those up one Christmas. I was not a very neat stitcher either. I was all about producing like getting it done. And not until I have come back to cross stitch, did I try and tidy up my stitching a bit. And I could tell the difference when I look at the back. Not that it's important. I mean, it's not the, wor the worst thing to have a kind of a messy back, but I think if the back is neater, my stitches tend to look better on the front too. Anyway, so um, my first big piece was a Precious Moments sampler, wedding sampler from my best friend from high school. So I was thinking about that the other day. I wonder if she still even has that. And <clears throat> it's probably on a white Ada because that's what was available at the time. Or maybe an even weave, but probably it was Ada. I did a lot of stitches, things with ha half stitches and quarter stitches. I did them on Ada. You just have to pierce the, be able to pierce the middle of the Ada block. Um, so you have, sometimes you have to use a sharp needle for that. And, uh, I remember going into the stores and the, some of the patterns were like $4, you know, and I was a poor college student. So I would think to myself, well, do I want to, do I want to eat? <laughs> do I want to buy milk and something else? Or do I want this cross stitch pattern? And there were at least an equal amount of times that I didn't drink the milk. I just bought the cross stitch pattern instead. But um, it was, I just remember thinking, this is, this is amazing. So here's a couple things I bought. I bought this out of a magazine. I'm pretty sure I bought a couple of things. I don't know if they were out of a magazine or a cross stitch store. So there's this pin. It's a vintage pin. I'm going to push this up here because I don't know you'll see it otherwise. It says, I love cross stitch. And it's got a little um, pair of scissors and some skeins of thread. And it's a pin. But I'm pretty sure that this is going to become a needle minder. I would say that this is... Yeah, I think I bought this out of a magazine. And those were when the magazines at the back had like the um, Spirit of Cross Stitch advertised. The, they weren't retreats. I guess they were festivals. But there was nothing even remotely close to me. And I didn't have the money to travel. I didn't, you know, we were modest in terms of, I grew up with a, a modest household in means. And um, through my college years and my husband came from a blue collar background also. And so um, we both went to school, right? And we both work professional jobs. So we work really hard for, for what we get. And I'm just grateful that I'm to a point in my life where I can do some things that go to retreats. So 
Anyway, I'm going to show you this. So this is a brooch that you can stitch something, maybe a petty point, and insert it in here. And this is what it looks like on the back. And I liked it so much that I probably mail ordered it. So I probably bought both of these. I got the round one and I've got the oval one. And now I'm like, what would I do with this? Although I could see, you know, you could do a petty point and stitch it in here and then attach it to a bigger stitch piece on like a pillow. This is pretty big for that, but it'd have to be a pretty good size one. But wouldn't that be interesting and different? I don't know. What else would you do with this? I can't imagine myself walking, you know, putting it on my... Probably not, but um, give me some ideas on how how you would finish this or what you would use this for and what would you do with it. I thought it was fun to share those things. I was just digging around in my joy box and I saw this and I, I started laughing. I thought, there you go. Vintage from the 80s or early 90s. Uh, let's see. I just have some haul. I don't have any quilting stuff to share this time. I don't think I've had any... Um, I, need fabric mug? I don't think so. This is my favorite mug from Hobby Lobby. It's like $2.50. We're out of everything. No coffee, no wine, no milk, no cream. So my husband said he would be probably a couple hours doing grocery shopping. So I thought this is a perfect time to get my video um, not filmed, not taped, produced. Anyway, get it done and, and, and on on YouTube. I did, so I love buttermilk basin. And we met Stacy one time at an event in Oregon. Lori and I did, and she's funny. I um, wouldn't mind hanging out with her. She's a lot of fun. Anyway, so I was on their website and then shopping because, you know, that's what I do in the night, shop for stuff on um, online. Buttermilk basin, I really like this um, particular pattern. And I did buy some Blackbird Designs fabric. I bought like, I bought a lot for not a lot on eBay. And, and I was going to maybe back fabric, back a quilt with it. And Lori said, we'll make a swoon quilt out of that, which I was like, what's a swoon quilt? So I went online and looked, and this sort of reminds me of that. And I could use this. I'm not sure. Anyway, I just really like that one. Like the graphic elements. I would have bought the kit. This was a kit. She didn't have it kitted up. But I love this. Isn't that adorable. This is all applique. So you could do a regular applique or you could put wool on there. Um, I'm not sure how heavy it would be if you made that all wool, but I really love this. And um, I did buy this kit. It's not Christmas, but come on. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? And it comes with, okay, so you, it comes with the wool applique, or the wool, so that you can applique the snowman on there, and then you can um, make the rest of the quilt. He's so cute. And this, I absolutely was dying when I saw this. I feel like I really, like, I would love to have these little irons, too. This looks like, I don't know, looks like something you'd see on Laurie Holt's channel. But isn't that... I mean, just so cute. And it comes with the, I guess that's a trim, right? The ruler trim and then all the stuff. So super cute. And then Kelly Stadola, check it out. I picked this up and I, I see this quilt here. This is the one that I'm just like, I was smitten with. The, um, I think I would change the colors a little bit on this, but I saw this and guys, I need to live a hundred lives. So I picked that one up and then I picked up this one, birds of a feather. What? I don't know if there was something. Else. Oh yes. Oh yes, definitely. I didn't have this one. So I'm making up for my um, last time where I wasn't buying blackbird quilt stuff. And now I am. So look at this one. Holy cow. If you watch Olivia B, she's really gotten into applique and she's working on one of the Halloween applique quilts by Blackbird. And then the last one, I picked up this one. So a couple people have shown this. This was a $12 book. 
it is worth every penny. I bought it online from Powell's Books. If you just Google this, Women's Work um, book, it'll come up. They, they had more copies. It was shrink-wrapped and had never been opened. There, it's all 100% eye candy. Very interesting history and, um, I mean, amazing. I won't spell the book for you. So let's see, I, what's on my agenda coming up? So I have the Midwest retreat, I'm leaving next week. And there for a few days, we have a couple bonus days where we're gonna go on another adventure. And then in another month, I go on another girls weekend and with about a dozen people. And then Lori and I signed up for a retreat in August at the attic. And then we signed up for another retreat in September in Missouri. And then we have a retreat in November. So I am making up for lost time. I, it just really kind of happened quickly. I didn't anticipate to sign up for that many retreats, but go big or go home, right? It's just, uh, I don't really do a whole lot else. In fact, I rarely leave my house. So my husband does the grocery shopping for crying out loud, but um, I'm just really super grateful. So. So I'm, I'm inserting this clip because I finished my video and then I was cleaning up and realized I missed some stuff. So I'm just going to catch it now so I don't have to remember to do it next time. A couple of the things that I'm thinking about working on, there's this. This is the Floral Heart Kit by Samplers Not Forgotten, one of my very favorite designers. When I, when I saw this come out on Instagram, I immediately knew that I was going to buy this. And probably it's going to be my next start. It has um, all the threads and all the goodies with it. Her kits are beautiful. I've stitched one or two of them and I just love them. So that one is on my short list. And every, every time I have a video, I show you my short list and it changes. And then I'm like, but I've got 80 whips or 79 whips or whatever I have. And I love all those. So I'm really enjoying working on my whips. I don't know if or when I'm gonna start these, but I just thought they were worth sharing. I had shown this one before too, and I have the threads for it. And I also have this chenille to make this little pumpkin. No, it's a tomato. It's a tomato on the top. I probably would make it a little bit different shape, but I'm not sure. I love this one. The colors in this are fantastic. So that one, uh, Night, Sh Night Shade Bird by Paulette. Ooh, she's going to be the designer at the May Cross Stitch Retreat in um, Amana, Iowa. Also, this one, I may have shown this one in the past. This is Nancy Alden, 1795 by Erica Michaels. And this one I saw stitched up on Instagram, and it is gorgeous. When you look at this, you think, oh, that's nice, you know. But when you see it stitched up, it's really, really very pretty. And also on my short list, this one. Yeah, and maybe it's because she's got red ribbons on it. I don't know. This is Anne Ariel, and then it has some French words that I can't pronounce. 1841 by GGR. This is, I think, a religious sampler. There's an altar on it and some motifs that are reminiscent of, of Christianity, I believe. So... I can see me stitching this one. Look at that border. It's kind of intense. Like you better be on your counting game to make sure that you got them spaced right. But truly, I would love that. Love, love, love that. So that's sort of on my short list. And this one surfaced. Now, some of my pals at She Stitch Nanigans and I bought this. Stitch Nanigans was what, 2019? And I don't know that anyone has started it. I've seen other people stitch it, but I don't think I've seen Olivia or Jennifer or Lori or Michelle or anybody start it. So I have, I think it calls for Gorianas. No, it calls for Belsois, which there's maybe, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, ten of them. Looks like there's ten of them. 
I probably will say for those, I have one of them in my stash. I just love this one. It's so fresh and sweet and I will probably pull the colors when I'm at the next time I'm at acorns and threads and see if I want to switch any out, maybe find some fabric, but I would love to start this one this year. And we'll see how this first batch of stitching goes, but it might be something I start in like June. If y'all are interested, if there's a sale going, let me know if there is one. Um, my Biedermeyer babes and I would probably join in with you. I, I hope you're having a great day and I will shoot another retreat, shoot another video after the retreat. I hope you have a great weekend. Get all your stitching time in. Take care.